I wonder um, uh, how much of a surprise is the speed up? What kind of increase are we looking at in terms of 5G orders? What we see is the 5G penetration is rapidly gaining momentum. And just over the last, uh, I would say, two years, it's been accelerated by more than a year. So we see a very uh, drastic acceleration of the demand for 5G. So far, it's primarily driven by North America, uh, where, where all the operators have launched 5G, as well as Korea, where you see um, also all the operators have launched. And those two markets uh, are really driving the 5G demand right now. Boy, hey, good morning to you. Can I ask about the, I know you want to talk about your business and not the problems that other businesses are having, but you, do you see evidence of the sort of Huawei effect, the fact that customers are maybe reluctant to go with Huawei at this point? Is there evidence of uplifting your numbers as a result of that? You know, the, uh, we cannot see any impact in our order books um, as of today. Uh, the, if, if anything, the... Um, uh, the geopolitical situation has caused more uncertainty. And I would be uh, honest to say more uncertainty normally leads to lower investments. And, and that's more what we're seeing than, than actually anything else. So I would say we are, we are not seeing any, any positive news from, from this. Are you able to um, see an increase in margins as well? I know that a lot of times in order to gain market share to get an edge over your competitors. You're going to have to give better prices to customers. Um, how do you see margins developing now? We have seen uh, during the quarter that we, or, or I should say this, we, we actually, as part of our strategy we laid out in 2017, uh, an important part was to gain market share and gain footprint. Uh, so we are investing in taking uh, contracts and taking new market shares, that's quite clearly the case. Uh, what we try to do is to be disciplined and, and actually take contracts where we have a clear competitive advantage and clear technological advantage. And we've seen that we continue to gain contracts. They are margin dilutive in the short term, uh, very positive in the long term, but, but they are challenged short term and they impact the third quarter but it's still a re it's a very marginal impact. It's a small impact, but nevertheless, it of course impacts us. Uh, going forward, we we see the no dramatic changes compared to the third quarter. But uh, but we will continue to take those contracts. And why do you have the confidence to upgrade your guidance today at Ericsson then, even with the backdrop of trade tensions, threatening investment decisions? Why have you decided to, to be as positive as you are? We see a couple of reasons. One is, uh, is of course, the increased pace of 5G take-up in the world. Uh, we are seeing, we're, we're of course seeing big demand in the early launch market. But we're seeing 5G demand developing in other parts of the world as well. Just look in Middle East, look in other parts of Asia. We see uh, still a slow pickup in Europe, but we expect that to pick up as well. So we're, we're quite bullish on the 5G development and see a number of opportunities for us there. Uh, then we have also made an acquisition of Catrain, uh, which adds sales to us. Uh, and we see a... Uh, tailwind from the currency of course as well so when you add that together we have increased the guidance by 20 billion kroner to 230 to 240 billion next year